And we back! Tim Wolves fans, I'm here to save the day. Tim Connolly is out, Kenny Beecham is in that GM job. This offseason, they pulled off one of the biggest trades in NBA history. And some people are already deeming it the worst trade in NBA history. Like five first round picks, rotational players, all to get Rudy Gobert in town, and they're below 500. They did this to, to speed up the process of being a contender, and they look very, very far from it. So today we're all Minnesota Timberwolves fans. I even brought up the Vintage Timberwolves merch specifically for this one. I have one goal, that is to win a Larry O'Brien trophy with Minnesota. That's it. But we do have rules, if we want to call it that. This video is not in the realm of hyper-realism. I want to say that out loud. This is not a hyper-realistic rebuild. But I do want to say Rudy Gobert is on the team. Because I think it would be too easy of a rebuild to throw Rudy Gobert to some other team. We get young ass and potentially picks back. And then boom, we back to, to being decent. Tim Connolly made a mistake. And instead of writing his mistake completely, I'm just I'm just going to make it work. I'm going to make it work seamlessly. So leave a like, subscribe. This video does not end until we win. You know what I'm saying? This core might be gone by the time we win. I don't know. Now, the reason we're doing this video today um, is because they are currently on a six-game loser streak. And the last game that they lost was was against the Detroit Pistons who don't have Kay Cunningham. Jaden Ivey didn't even play the fourth quarter or didn't score in the fourth quarter. None of their starters scored in the fourth quarter. They lost to Jaime Diallo and Marvin Bagley in the fourth quarter. That is the, the worst it could possibly be. Obviously, Carthony Towns is out with an injury, but he will be back eventually. I have a few different things that I would do to this roster. Number one is trading D'Angelo Russell. Now, he has got a lot better since the beginning of the season where he was shooting 0% from the field, it felt like. But... I, I do kind of like when Anthony Edwards is the primary ball handler. You know what I'm saying? So we might lean into that a little bit by trading away D'Angelo Russell, who is somewhat high usage, maybe too much high, too high usage for what I want to do with this Minnesota Timberwolves team. These are the people I'm deeming safe for this season. I'm going to say Anthony Edwards is safe. Rudy Gobert is safe. Jaden McDaniels is safe. I would probably say Nas Reed is safe. But after that, anybody can go. And you know the same mention they call Anthony Towns. Because cause one of the ways to potentially right this ship, and even though I would hate it, it's the trade cap. The double center thing where the seven foot Carthony Towns is now a power forward, it ain't look pretty. Now, I know Cat got injured on November 29th or whatever. This, it ain't look pretty, you know? So I'm giving it a little bit of chance, but I'm not saying he's safe. Once we win that championship, Carthony Towns might not be on the team. So, the first thing I want to do is trade away D'Angelo Russell. Now, I already scouted. I already figured out what teams I'm, I'm interested in giving D'Angelo Russell to. It has to be a team that wants to buy the one-year, $31 million D'Angelo Russell this season. The team I came up with was the Washington Wizards. And no, I'm not trading for Bradley Beal because they say that they building around Bradley Beal. And I feel like it will be very um, Washington Wizards- you know, and, and on their wheelhouse to trade for D'Angelo Russell, who is a good player. So this trade is, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a sexy trade by any means. But you trying to do the sexy thing is what got you in this place. You trying to get a star-ish player is what got you in this place. No, we need to take a step back and look at it differently. D'Angelo Russell, Nathan Knight, who killed my bulls like three weeks ago. I, ain't, I will never forget that name. And then Austin Rivers, who plays, but you know. For Rui Hachimura, who in real life has been playing really, really good. Monte Morris and Will Barton for the contracts. I, I just I just want a little bit more depth. I want a little bit more umph. And I feel like this could be it. They want a second and they want to give me a first. Who am I to say no to a first round pick? Especially, especially when we traded away our entire draft cupboard to give Rudy Gobert on the team. I'm trying to make this a pseudo three-team trade by figuring out where to throw Will Barton. Um, I, I'm looking for teams that are selling. The Hornets are selling, but you know what selling teams, this, this is what it says. This is how they explain selling teams to you. The front office is ready to give up on the current roster and looking to get draft picks and prospects to start a rebuild. Guess what we don't have? Draft picks. So even though it will be dope to upgrade to uh, Kelly Oubre on a one-year deal or something with that contract, we don't have draft picks to send them for Kelly Oubre. We did just get that 2026, but I would I want to keep that one. That one's close to my heart, at least for the foreseeable future. The the Utah Jazz, who we made a deal with earlier um, in, in the summertime, has some stuff, you know, about 14, 15 million. You could bring back Malik Beasley if they want to give us that, but why would they do why would they do that for us? You know what I'm saying? They want us to be bad because they have our picks. I, I have some ideas and they ain't pretty. 
I promise you they ain't pretty. But do they have to be? You know what I'm saying? Do they have to be to, to get the job done? Can we somehow snag Gary Harris, who's 28 years old, that allows Jalen, uh, Jalen sucks to get a lot of minutes, and then they just have so many people anyway, Cole Anthony, RJ Hampton, these are all rotation players. And then he's 28 while the rest of those dudes are 24, 21, 22. So maybe we can take in Gary Harris for basically nothing. Do they mess with Gary that much that they send him to an opportunity where he has an op he has a, a world where he can be better in a better situation? I don't know. Can we use this to go get Josh Richardson? Josh Richardson is a good upgrade for that position. I mean, if we offer this straight up, I mean, our value is higher. They want, oh, they want J-Mac. Can we afford to give up J-Mac? Because that would mean that we just gave up two point guards. And, and I don't, J-Mac ain't played a ton this season. I'll do it though. I'll do it though. Josh Richardson is now our starter shooting guard. Anthony Edwards' overall goes down by one as him being my lead primary ball handler. And, you know, it's, it might take him a year or two to really grow into this role because he's not a pass-first guy. And I, I don't want him to be a pass-first guy. I do want his vision to get a little bit better. But right now, if we go the way we want it, I still do want Jalen Noel to get a good amount of minutes because he, he's a bucket. But I didn't want him to start, even though he's the higher overall between him and Josh Richardson. Just because Josh Richardson kind of like a, a kind of like a glue guy to me. Good defender, hit his shots occasionally, you know, stuff like that. He don't even need to get a lot of minutes. So those are the small trades we do now. Rui Hachimura is going to eventually go to the bench unit once Carthony Towns is back. But, you know, two small trades right there that I think can improve our chances of making the playoffs this season. With five games under 500, oh my God, first game with Rui. First game with Rui, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in real life, Rui has been doing this recently. I think the last two games that they played, he had like a 30-piece and a 25-piece. So he's actually maybe stepping out of his shell. So if you're watching this and you're a Wizards fan, you're probably mad at me for making that trade happen. But... In his first game, he went crazy. In the second game, he had a double-double. But it's time for you to move over to that bench, my my guy, because Carthony Towns is back. Now, I'm giving this this season to, to really to really test the waters on the Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert pairing. And if it don't go the way we want it to, we might have to recoup, recuperate our assets and trade Carthony Towns. But that's something we have to worry about a little bit later in the video potentially potentially and now we just have another young guy that we can kind of buy into 24 years old you know sometimes these players go to a new situation and now they just progress a little bit better that's what we hope for for Rui um and then that kind of leads like Kyle Anderson and whatever land but Kyle Anderson can run some three as well so I think we're fine I also want Anthony Edwards to get more than 28 minutes per uh because he is our star he is our future he is our everything right now so we want him to get a little bit more than that next game is just the Clippers is a good team a big win right here. A, a big win with the new team. We lose by a million points. That's fine. It was Carthen Towns' first game back. Next game should be a layup versus the Houston Rockets. And it is. Okay, so we went by 16 there. Anthony Edwards, eight assists. This is the type of stuff we need to see from Ant in his new role as the, the lead ball handler. So I'm thinking about it. Josh Richardson can play some small forward. Obviously, Jaden McDaniels. But we also got Rui, Kata Bates, Diop, and... Kyle Anderson, who can all run small four in case there's an injury. So with him making $7 million, we can kind of use that as an asset to maybe buy and get something else now. Um, I just don't know what we should be looking for necessarily. So I'll get into the sweepstakes. I'll send a Torian Prince to the Clips, and then we get back Amir Coffey, who will probably never play, at least not this season. And we got a second round pick for Torian Prince, basically. That That's it. Uh, we're still four games under. Uh, five and five in our last 10, so... We are still the definition of, of mid, but I think that's that's okay right now because I think the second half of the season, we're going to hit a nice little stretch. I mean, that, that starting off with a win versus the Grizz is pretty cool because uh, the Grizzlies are really good, but then we lose we lose to D'Angelo Russell, and I bet he had a good game. I knew it. I knew he was going to go crazy against us. That's just the way it go, man. That's just the way it go. Um, but at least we beat... Okay, so as long as we get to around 500, you see... Below 500 is getting us in the in the playoffs right now. So we're still in the, the playoff mix, even though we're four games under. And that's that's a nice little win streak right there. That's a nice little win streak right there. Two back-to-back -back against two playoff teams. And then, yeah, we're on the streak. We're 500 team, ladies and gentlemen. We put up 150 points against LA, where they're leading score. Man. So Anthony Davis got all eight offensive rebounds and shot six for 15. That got to be Rudy Gobert. Oh, God. Anthony Towns. See, see, I was saying that we might have to move Cat to eventually hit that next step. 
Cat has been looking all right, you know? He's he's looking all right. I can't be mad at a 35-point near triple-double with zero turnovers to Cat. The zero turnovers is the thing I'm excited about. Okay, so we are now 500 team, which puts us in the play-in. We want to be above 500, obviously, but a 500 near 500 puts us in the play-in. And if we're in the play-in, that means we have a shot to, 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 oh man, we lost three in a row. Well, there was that. Not the shot to win the championship, but a shot to not get, not get fired as the GM, I guess. Then we just go on a bad streak, man. There's a win against the Warriors again. The Warriors are looking kind of bad this season. We beat them a few times. A win against the Kings, that's a big one. And I think we're right back in the mix. Yeah, we're right back in the mix. Two games under with two weeks ago. These are big, big games down the stretch. We beat the Suns, and the Suns are beneath us. Oh, my God. This this conference is crazy. Um, the Lakers are another lottery team. So, four games left. Can we finish above 500? There's a win. We might stay away from the play-in if we win out. If we win out, we stay away from the play-in, baby. Wait, Ben Simmons did what? Dang. 20-point triple double. Okay, Ben. Yeah. If we... If we, we went out, no, we just need to win one of these next two games. And this one is against the Spurs who are trying to lose basketball games. And right before the playoffs, Rudy Gobert breaks his leg. I decided to keep injuries in because it just makes it more realistic. And Rudy Gobert breaks his leg in the second to last game of the season. And that sucks. So we moving Cat over back to the center. And I think like this, we should, we should start um Rui we should start Rui and that allows Cal Anderson to still come off our bench that is a a big blow to the team a huge blow to the team I know you can argue in real life that the team plays better without him but I don't know if that's how it works in 2k so we're gonna run just a nine man for the playoffs um and just let Cat who's tired right now Anthony Edwards kill a game Ant was averaging what 4.7 assists last season but before the the you dig and now got up to 5.2. We are a play in off team, not a play in team. Ended the season beautifully. And then we have a sprained left knee from Anthony Edwards. Missing a week or two. Like, come on, bro. That is the worst case scenario. The, the last two games of the season, my two of my top three players get injured, bro. That's insane. So Anthony Edwards will be back sometime in this series. But we're the, we're the, th the six seed going against John Morant and them without two of our best players. We won the first game of the series, though. All right, Cat. You know what they've been saying about you in the playoffs, man. Make, make them believe us. I think we could probably go until game three. That's what I was going to say. He was going to come back right after game three. Okay, so that's good. And now we just got to fix our rotation again. All right, and is back in the lineup. I feel like we got a chance. First game after his injury, he was bad. But that's okay. A little bit of rust. We're down 3-1. I mean, Cat in this playoffs has been amazing. He's been trying to keep the team afloat. Unfortunately, he can't do it by himself. And now we're in a tough spot because it's hard to gauge what we should do because we got to the playoffs and we didn't have our, our best guys. We don't know if the Carthony Towns Rudy Gobert experiment could work because they didn't play enough games together. Carthony Towns missed a month and a half, and then in the play the playoffs came around and boom, we get injured. Super tough part is Nas Reed is signing with the with the Kings. I tried to match exactly what they was doing, and uh, it didn't didn't help. The Raptors might try to steal Jalen Noel. We got to try to pull him back in. Okay, look like we're successful on that, so we'll, we'll take that. And then Rui signing for pretty low for the the type of guy he could potentially be. I don't know what his progression is going to look like, but, you know, we, we like to have another young-ish, 25, young-ish player on the roster. I'm trying to use my mid-level exception for Bruce Brown. Bruce Brown, I know they got him in the game as a small four, power four. He's starting at the two for us. He's starting at the two for us. He's 6'4". He does all the dirty work. He shoots three ball. He defends. I think he's the perfect matchup. They need a, some dirty work players, and they don't have a lot of those. So, boom, he's going to start. Jalen Noel, he's just going to be a guy that scores a bunch for us. At least that's his archetype. I don't think he'll ever be able to start alongside Car Anthony Towns. At least not on, I mean, not alongside Car Anthony Towns, but Anthony Edwards. Losing Nas Reed hurts bad because Nas is actually one of the better backups in basketball, and he did exactly what we needed him to do. Nothing more, nothing less. And those are the type of players I really like. So here we go. We'll play a progression. We see, okay, Anthony Edwards goes up. Rudy Gobert drops. Jaden McDaniels finally gets some bads progression because he don't be getting nothing. Rui stays the same, which is not fun. 
Um, and then we see Wendell Moore Jr. get better. And then Josh also gets better. So, all right. So now we get a real opportunity to see these guys work together. Uh, Cat starting off good, um, which is a good sign. Let's go like a month or so into the season. I legit think this is going to end with us having to trade Car Anthony Towns. You know? I was, oh my God, Rudy, can you just stay healthy, my G? And again, it would just be easy for me to say, hey, tra trade away Rudy Gobert. We get a couple people here, a couple people there, then boom, we back. No, 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 no. I just don't think that's the right move. But here we are sitting well below 500, starting off another season struggling. So, you know what? It's time to shop Rudy Gobert. I mean, Carthony Anthony Towns. Car Anthony Towns. And listen, if I'm shopping him... I'm not looking to get a star player in return because in most cases, that don't really make sense. So I'm kind of like consolidating and trying to build a better team more than thinking about the names attached. And there's one specific place that I have a few pieces that I really, really want. And that's the Toronto Raptors. Scotty Barnes is injured. He'll be back in a couple weeks. But like an OG Ananobi, Gary Trent package with Car Anthony Towns and... Amir Coffee coming to play. Oh, okay. Amir Coffee is like a negative asset. They're going to say no to this because the increased Car Anthony Towns overall is only two more than, than OG. They won't Brucey and they'll give us. I don't want Precious Achua. You know? I don't want it. But I give you that second. I don't want Precious Achua, y'all. I don't want him. Do I accept that trade that send Precious back? Because they're probably saying to me, we don't, we don't need another center. Because we already got him. So you know what? I did change Carnegie Towns back to a center because I thought his overall was going to go up. What if I made him to a power forward? Do they do they seem more interested now? As stupid as that may seem. Was it Carnegie Towns and Amir Coffey off of the trade? They want a first and they'll give us Precious. I, <laughs> I don't really want Precious. I'm just going to keep saying that. Um, but you can still have Josh. Fine. Deal is done. Deal is done. Um, OG's on the last year of his deal, too, so we have to re-sign him after the season. But now, we have a line of Anthony Edwards, Gary Trent Jr., OG Ananobi. Um, where is my guy, Jaden McDaniels? Yeah, stop taking McDaniels out of my lineup, please. Dang, Bruce Brown is not even getting minutes anymore. That's how deep we just got with that trade. Jaden McDaniels and uh, Rudy Gobert. I mean, dang, yeah, that's kind of insane. Do we need Rui minutes anymore then? If Kyle Anderson is that four and then Precious can run four to five, we'd rather have Bruce Brown minutes, I think, over Rui Hachimura right now. So Rui could potentially be a movable piece too if we don't find minutes for him eventually. But you know what? Having injury insurance is always great. I really like our lineup. We're basically relying on the, the improvement of Anthony Edwards and now OG Ananobi throughout the next season or so. Uh, they signed Gary Trent Jr. to a multi-year deal, so he's under contract till he's 27. So now our core is still young and good, and they can grow together with Rudy Gobert being 31, and he's regressing and stuff, but he'll still be impa uh, impactful. First game after the trade is a win, um, and you know what the next game we play against? <laughs> Here we go. Like, their lineup... Can I fix their lineup? I gotta fix their lineup. There's no way Coward D. Towns is the power for it. <laughs> and, and Pascal is the center. No way. And we won and we blew him out. Cat had a good game in his return. Um, but ultimately, Anthony Edwards. Oh, Precious. I didn't want Precious. But he might have been a, a legit steal. I won't lie. He might have been a legit steal. So, okay. So we're going to go to around the deadline and see how good and or bad we are. Um, we are now slightly below 500 after a nice little win streak. Van Vando for McDaniels. We're going to say no to that. But a win on the back-to-back -back is good. Go against the Bulls. It's another good, good little run right there. Okay, y'all. And JD McDaniel's back from his fake injury. Not fake. Not a fake injury. But one that he was playing through. And we on a win streak. Okay, we love it. We love it. We love it. We love it. We're here. We're looking good. John Morant won MVP. So shout out, shout out to him. Shout out to him. Um, defensive player of the year, Evan Mobley, 22 years old, defensive player of the year. Most approved goes to Cam Reddish. Chris Finch. I ain't gonna lie to you. I almost fired Chris Finch this offseason. Legit was looking at my options. Luckily, the the, uh, the coaching carousel wasn't crazy, or he would have been out of here. But instead, he wins coach of the year. That's how quickly and easy things can happen. Uh, we don't win executive of the year, even though we made a trade when we were a sub 500 team, and now we were one of the best teams of basketball. Whatever, don't don't you know? Don't pay no attention. You know, go out there and win. Anthony Edwards makes an All NBA team. We transition to make him the full time point guard. We trade away Carl Anthony Towns, and he ends up averaging 29, six and five. 
on, on very great shooting splits. His three-point percentage went up 12 points in one season. His field goal percentage went up 10, 11 points in one season. So, you know, a great year for him. Um, defensive teams, we don't really got nobody there, but that's fine. We end up being the one seed. Based on where we started off, the one seed is crazy to get there. The Raptors uh, ended up 34 and 48. Um, they got they got to get their backcourt good. We did take away who do we take away from them? We took away Gary Trent Jr., but they let Fred Van Vliet walk. So they, if they can get some good guard play next season, they gonna be alright. They in a good spot. They in a good spot. A, lot, a lottery pick because uh, they didn't give us no pick to get cat. They in a good spot. We'll look at them. Uh, that's if we don't win a championship this season, which is a possibility as being the one seed. Uh, we're going against the Suns. All right. The Suns are the eighth seed in this universe in year number two. And we take care of them pretty, pretty easily. And five, take care of the five. There we go. To go against the young Houston Rockets. Okay. They didn't do the thing, but they traded for Michael Porter Jr. How the heck? Did they end up with Michael Porter Jr.? Harden is in Denver. So they signed Harden and then traded Harden in one season for Michael Porter Jr. What the heck? What the heck is happening? Okay. Um, we beat them game one, game two. We are one game away from the conference finals, so we will face off against MVP Ja Morant. Oh, they got injuries. Oh my God, we might make a finals appearance. They have injuries and some significant ones too. Hey, hey a championship is a championship. Call the Mickey Mouse all you want. If we can get to that championship with Desmond Bain out day to day, so he's probably going to come back amidst this uh, in this series. Um, Dylan Brooks doesn't play for them anymore, but they do have Zaire Williams there. And so they Desmond Bain being injured through the first, at least the first couple games is like something we need to take advantage of. First game, we win. Thank you. I'm assuming that he's back for game two. Would it be in day-to-day? -day? He's not back. Wow, he is not back, ladies and gentlemen. We go up 2-0 because he is not back. Ja, MVP Ja is trying to do a lot. He's still not back. He's missing the first three games. We're up 3-0. That's the series. He can come back all he want now. He can come back all he want. And th there he is. He's in the lineup. Now, imagine if they come back down 3-0 and they don't. Anthony Edwards versus Lonzo Ball in the Chicago Bulls in the NBA Finals. They were the sixth seed. Drum is their center, but that's it. This is the same Bulls team me and you know other than Drum being their center. And he's playing through an injury. D. Rose is back. Can I root against Minnesota today? The Bulls get a championship and Derrick Rose is on the roster? Caleb Martin, Zach Collins, Seth Curry. So... Actually, their depth is pretty solid for this team. You know, a little bit better than I anticipated it to be. But I I might be bugging. Do we have the better team? Uh, we have the best player in the series. And then OG on DeMar DeRozan. That's a good, that's a good matchup. OG got that defense. They, we're starting Jalen Noel. We have been starting Jalen Noel. So I don't want to take him out the lineup now that we're in the finals. But, but Bruce Brown probably matches up better with Zach. And if we go down in the series, we're going to switch that up. Rudy versus Drum. Okay. All right. Let's get it. Game one is a loss. Um, and Zach Levine went off. What Jalen Noel do? Yeah, Jalen. I'm sorry. We got we to gotta take those minutes away. Not take them away. I, I, I mean, I guess, yeah, take them away. I need, a, I need a, a defender. And I'm putting Brucey Brown in there. Yep, I'm putting Brucey e. Brown to guard Zach Levine. I'm giving minutes to OG too because OG needs to clamp up. And you know what? We low key, I don't want to take Jalen Noel out completely because he's having a good run. But we might just lower everybody's minutes because we need our stars. We need our stars to just play a little bit more. We we have too much diversity when it comes to like minutes played. Like Rudy might not be a star anymore at 85, but he needs to play as if he was. Game two, there we go. Anthony Edwards with 35 and 11 in an NBA Finals game. Amazing. Zach Levine still hit eight threes on us. But man, that's crazy. But we were able to, to maintain the rest. DeMar DeRozan, a big game in this one. Anthony Edwards, 50% from the field. Needs a little bit of help, though, y'all. Kyle Anderson off the bench gave him something, but he needed a little bit more help. Needed a little bit more help. Don't go down 3-0. 3-1. There we go. That's a big win. A Anthony is doing everything. If we win, undoubtedly, he's the Finals MVP. 33, 5, 8, and 6 right now. So he's doing amazing stuff. Here we go. 
Big game five. You know what? We go Simcast game five. Simcast game five because this is the most important game so far. We're up. It's a close one, but we are up nonetheless. It, we stay that way. It is close going into the fourth. The Timberwolves are, are, are winning the series so far. 3-2 us. It wasn't a pretty one for nobody, but we had we had a lot of people hit double digits. And they had Zach Levine with a 29-12 game. It wasn't enough. We are, dang, Drum had 21 boards and four blocks. But he also had five turnovers for a dude who shouldn't touch the ball like that. We are one game away. They forced a game seven. I, I knew that they were forcing a game seven. That's why I did not simcast it. I knew that they were about to force a game seven. Patsy Williams, 28, 28 minutes, zero points, and four turnovers is crazy. This is the last, potentially the last game. We need to legit just shorten it. Jalen, you probably been playing great this series. He legit did not miss a shot last game, but this is this is for all the marbles. And if we play for all the marbles, I need my best defenders. I need my, my best lineup out there. And that means giving Anthony Edwards 40-plus minutes per, giving uh, uh, Rudy Gobert 35. Here we go. NBA Finals. Game 7. We're in and Minnesota with it. So far, it's been a lot of Minnesota. But the Bulls go on their own little run to end the third, the second quarter into the third. But here come the Minnesota Timberwolves. Just three minutes away. Just for six seconds away. We jumping in. Just six seconds away from doing the thing. It only took a little bit. Anthony Edwards... Oh, my God. He's an assist away from a triple-double. I'm not going to do it. We're we going to be classy here. Anthony Edwards dribbles out the clock. And just like that, we turn Minnesota to an NBA champion in, what, two seasons? In just two seasons. And just like that, the boys did it. Anthony Edwards teleports to the bench to cry because he's been through a lot. What a great moment for Chris Finch to be on the chopping block going into the season. To raise the Larry O'Brien trophy, man. I think we put together a good collection of guys that just come out and help us win basketball games. The vibes was different. I can't skip this. I want to kind of skip this. I ain't going to lie to you. We can't skip it. But there we go. Chris Finch raising the Larry OB, man, with all of the guys behind him. And, of course, Finals MVP is going to go to no other than Anthony Edwards in this one. Shout out to Adam Silver. Give him that trophy, my boy. Give him that trophy. OG Ananobi in Game 7. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. I cannot believe it happened that fast. I was fully prepared to go like three seasons into it. I mean, Ant-Man is only a 91. It's not like he even developed to one of the best players in basketball, but he did at the same time. And you know how we do it. There is no shenanigans. There never is. It's always 50s across the board. And we did it just that fast. A couple small trades to start off with, and then a big trade to send away a guy that's beloved here. You know, it, it hurts to trade away Carthen Towns, but it was for the better of the organization. And OG Ananobi and Gary Trent play big old parts in us winning that championship. And that's all we can ask for. Leave a like, subscribe, and and I, I don't know. What's the slogan of the Timberwolves? I don't know. But shout out to the Wolves.